Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Pelican Talks. It's my pleasure to have with us today the 2015 winner of the prestigious Man Booker Prize for Fiction, Mr. Marlon James. Pelican Talks is a way for us to further engage our alumni population with some of our more well-known alumni and to find out more about them. And we are very pleased to have the first Jamaican and the first UWI graduate to win the Man Booker Prize. We're very proud of you, Marlon. Happy to have you here. Thanks for being here. Thanks. Thanks for having me. This is great. Yeah. Well, for those who don't know, or don't, maybe don't know all the details of the Man Booker Prize, I thought I would start out by letting people know the details. It's a literary prize which is given each year for the best original novel written in the English language and published in the UK. The winner of the prize is generally assured international renown and success. I hope you found that so far, Marlon. <laughs> <laughs> Prize is of great significance for the book trade, and it is greeted with great anticipation and fanfare. It's also a mark of distinction for authors, even just to be included in the shortlist or even on the long list for the award. It is about just over 40 years old, being awarded first in 1969, and it's one of the world's richest literary prizes as well. And it's considered by many to be akin to the Nobel Prize of, of Literature. So. We are again indeed honored to have you here. So, thank you. Let's start with your childhood. You're the child of mm. some middle class parents. Your mom was a police detective, and your father. A so, how was that? Um, you know, I mean, are you hearing me still? Yes, yes. Go ahead. Um, a lot of that was like any middle class upbringing. It was pretty stable, occasionally boring. Um, <laughs> My, my parents were, you know, they were very big on not taking work home. Mm -hmm. um, so, and, you know, we were like a lot of families in the 80s, two working parents. I mean, we were the first generation to have two working parents. Two working parents um, going to Wilmer's High School, Wilmer's Boys, living the same 80s everybody was living in, wearing Michael Jackson windbreakers, even though it was 96 degrees. <laughs> um and just sort of, um, you know, trying to get through school, trying to get through college. I remember going from, I remember Hurricane Gilbert blew the, the, the September before I was supposed to get to UA. Um, oh, wow. Yeah. So, so when I got to UA, some trees that have been there hundreds of years were just gone. Um, That's right. But it's, uh, but yeah, I mean, despite, you know, the, 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 the 80s had a different kind of turmoil than the 70s. Mm -hmm. uh, the 80s, we, and I remember a lot of it. I remember strikes all the time. I remember the struggles teachers were going through. I remember the best car I could get was a Lada. You, know, <laughs> so, you remember um, the supermarket shortages? Yeah? Uh? The supermarket shortages? Super, yeah, I, and I, I remember that. But I also remember that, I mean, the 80s is where my, you know, my literary sensibility was formed. And a lot of that was at, at Woolmer's and, um, and at UA. Um, you know, my first lit teacher is the first time talking talking about books in a very, very serious way. But also mm -hmm. uh, um, thinking about, you know, being a writer. I mean, my first writing class was John Hearn's class in the, in the, in the, is it in the, in the um, Sherlock Center? Why am I forgetting the name? Yeah, Sherlock 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 Center. Sherlock Center, yeah. Um, so, yeah, it was, it was in some ways not necessarily remarkable or different, but in a lot of ways, it was, it still is, you know, when we think of uniquely Jamaican childhoods, I think we think country mm -hmm. um, most of the time. But, you know, Jamaican middle class experiences are uniquely Jamaican experience too. Uh, you know, I grew up in Portmore. Most of my friends were living in either Havendale or Duane Park or Norbrook. Um, a lot of the, the experiences, I mean, I certainly wouldn't trade for anything else, but it was still very much, uh, you know, a, a Jamaican experience where you're very, very conscious of the outside world. Mm -hmm. And this is before internet. But I think that those are the things that kind of just define my childhood, I think, being very local, but being very sort of engaged with the world around me. And books had a lot to do with that. Absolutely. In fact, in your book acceptance speech, you reminisced about vying with your late father over which of you could recite the longest Shakespearean soliloquy. So mm -hmm. literature has always been part of your life from you were very, very young. 
Who were your favorite mm -hmm. authors in your youth? Favorite authors? Uh-huh. In your well, youth. When I was young, I was reading a lot of children's authors. So I was, I, I, um, I remember the first book I read that I really, really loved was uh, um, Little House in the Big Woods, Laura Ingalls Wilder. Oh, okay. Uh-huh. Uh, I don't forget Little House in the Prairie, but Little House in the Big Woods. <laughs> and uh, it's funny, I was on a panel. It was a writer from Singapore and a writer from Iran. And mm -hmm. they asked all three of us what was our ch first childhood book to remember. And we all said Little House in the Big Woods. Really? Wow. Yeah. That and was... what I think because Laura Ingalls Wilder was just so popular, every country had the Little House books. Mm -hmm. But um, but that was, so I read a lot of that. Um, a lot, lots and lots and lots of comics. And mm -hmm. that genre is still very important to me. Excellent. Uh, oh, interesting. Well, a lot of that, I mean, it's, it's, chances are I wasn't going to run into Tolstoy, but I was going to run into Spider-Man. <laughs> um, so, so there's a, a lot of, a lot of comics. Another thing that um, I remember when I, when I hit certain Wilmers, that was the first time we were doing a lot of Caribbean books. Mm. So Miguel Street, The Year in San Fernando, In the Castle of My Skin, Brother Man, and uh, even though a lot of those books are already 20 or 30 years old, it still was the first time I saw literature with people who look like me and sound like me and deal with the type of realities that I see people dealing with. Mm -hmm. um, so those, you know, those became, you know, really, really, really important. Um, but I was always, I never, I never had a snobbery about books. Once, once it became two, co it was, once it was within two covers, I would read it. Wonderful. Yeah. So books were really a major influence in your teenage years. Was was books uh the main one of your major influences? Yeah, books and oh, but also music. Music to a yeah. huge extent. Um, mm -hmm. you know, by 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 the late eighties, I was already listening to a lot of alternative rock. Um, I was also watching a lot of 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 film, a lot of cinema, a lot. All these things, you know, have a lot to do with my my um development as a writer um the first you know john crow's devil my first novel owes a lot to the western mm. uh, it was structured in a sort of like a cowboy movie the stranger comes to town and disrupts everything which is like a cowboy movie yeah, yeah. um uh, you know music particular people like prince and so on were just the whole idea of living a creative life was a lot inspired by that um I was just inspired by the people around me. Um, mm -hmm. uh, the, the, uh, of course, my parents. Mm -hmm. yeah, my parents were really interesting in that they, were never, they never forced a career on us. They were never judgmental that way. They never said you had to be a lawyer or a doctor. Nothing wrong with either of those. But there was never any pressure in my house, in our house, to you have to be this. Right. Which I think was pretty radical for them. It was actually, yeah. Yeah, I think also because they grew up in careers which they felt they had to do, which I don't think ever really made them happy. Really, because your mom was a police detective, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that was kind of different for a woman in that era, wasn't it? Was very, it? it was very different for a woman in that era. Certainly, there were there were police women, but no, no the, the the idea of the of going to detective was something that was definitely. In fact, she. If, I'm pretty sure. I'm ninety nine point nine percent sure was she was the first woman to make a detective. Right, she's probably a trailblazer in her own right. Mm hmm. She was in a in a lot of ways because she's going. She she you know she was heading in territory where nobody was going before. Mm hmm. Um, and I think that is one of the things that led her to that attitude that there is no sort of fixed idea of what you should do with your life. If that were the case, she'd probably still be enlisted. Yeah. yeah. Well, like you were very lucky to benefit from that, you know. Yeah, it's funny. I didn't think so back then. <laughs> they were just, oh God, it's not another job I don't want to do. It's like I don't want to be, I don't want your job. <laughs> My father was very big that I should not become a lawyer. Um, oh. But you know, uh, them and 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 just, I mean, you know, I, you, you can be inspired by anybody. You can be inspired by by anybody who does something that um you wish you did uh, i remember um the first time i read this novel dog eaters it was 1990. so i'm still at ue i probably was even still in john hearn's class 
-hmm. and this novel where this person writes about the Philippines and, and, and I've said this before, it's the greatest novel about Jamaica ever written, but it's set in the Philippines. Wow. It's, it just nails everything, including, this is one thing I realize. One of the things about countries like, cities like Manila or Kingston or Cape Town or, or New Orleans, we're always between two things, a general election and a beauty contest. <laughs> so, okay. So, and when I saw that, I go, yep, that's Jamaica. <laughs> <laughs> that's so funny. But it's very true, actually. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's interesting, though. You didn't really begin your, your life, your career as a, as a writer. When mm -hmm. I knew you were um, head of James Hill Design, yeah. how did that happen first and then? Mm -hmm. Well, I knew you before that. I was at Muyong Butler. There we go. Yeah. Um, well, how did that happen? I really wanted to write. I wanted to stay creative, but I also didn't want to be destitute. <laughs> um, okay, it was from necessity <laughs> yeah and one of the places in, in it still is where you get an opportunity to be really creative and work with really interesting creative people but still make a pretty good living was advertising mm -hmm. and and that is what drew me to that field and I was in it for a very long time um, first working at Muyong Butler which was a, a, one of the top agencies at the time and then going off and doing my own thing and um, it's something I really liked for, for, for a long time. And at one point, I even switched more into doing graphic design and writing. And, and, and that's, where, that's where a lot of my apprenticeship as a writer came out of. Because I, I didn't do a creative writing program, an MFA program, until my, I published my first novel. So a lot of that, that training... Mm -hmm. that I didn't realize it was so late. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I didn't... I mean, I didn't... Go back to I didn't go back to school till I was like 35, um, and I was a good usually good tenure is 12 years younger than everybody else in the class. Um, <laughs> yeah, it was it was weird. I had more in common with the teachers than <laughs> the fellow students. Um, but 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 to, before but but that's what I did: advertising and, and graphic design, and I did that for a while. But I think at some point. If you're in a creative field, you have to make some decisions about yourself. I think, are you a copywriter or a writer doing copy? Are you a graphic artist or an artist doing graphics? They're not the same thing. Both are totally fine. But you need to know which one you are. Mm -hmm. And I realized I was a writer doing copy. I wasn't a copywriter. And I think that's when, that's when one I started to be dissatisfied with it. And um, my first novel, I wrote really only for myself, just to, just as a creative outlet that wasn't necessarily decided on by committee or meeting the demands of the of the client, or the client sometimes really, really not I wouldn't say incorrect, but really sort of outdated idea about Jamaicans and Jamaican intelligence. Then that got annoying after a while. You know, like write long copy. Jamaicans don't read. It's like no Jamaicans read. You just don't make it interesting for them to read. It's, <laughs> and, it's, um, and yeah, so so writing became writing actually was an escape. It was a sort of a lock myself up in my bedroom and I write this novel which I didn't intend to publish, and then I tried to publish and it didn't happen and all of that. But um, but that's how I started and and. Right in advertising, I certainly learned things like economy, get in quickly, you know, wow the reader. I tell my students, you know, if your story becomes a masterpiece on page three, I will never know. Because <laughs> I'm, I'm not going to read that far. Right. That's you know. true. Mm. That's interesting. Okay. Well, I remember you, I think it was. You, you said that you were six years old when Bob Marley was assassinated. Mm -hmm. was, was attempted. This attempted assassination took place. And A Brief History of Seven Killings has that kind of at its core. Do you remember it vividly? Is that, is that why it kind of came up as the... No, no I, um, I remember it vaguely. I have more memories. I have more vivid memories of, of when he was seeking cancer treatment. 
because it was it was constantly okay. updated. So I remember when he went to Miami and the cancer is gone and then hearing the cancer is back and then hearing that he's going to Germany and, and because it was such hopeful news it was yeah. and 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 it was um you know I, I, I think I can still remember you know a, a Charles Lewin or a Neville Willoughby talking about this on, on RGR or JBC and yeah. The, I remember that, and I remember when they announced he died because the whole thing was, but the but this new doctor was supposed to save him. So I remember that the 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 the, um, the Bob Marley this this shooting at I remember it very vaguely, and I remember it because you know children children are very perceptive even when they don't know what they're perceiving, mm -hmm. and I remember just this sort of hush that was in the room when Bob Marley got shot. Mm -hmm. Because, and this is what I know now, I didn't know it then, but now I know that Marley was supposed to be untouchable. And 56 Hope Road was supposed to be, it's, the, it's, the, it's that um, safe space in the middle of Kingston. So now I know why they were, they, were ups, they were scared, upset, because if they can shoot Marley, they can shoot anybody. Mm. Mm. I didn't know that at six, but mm. I knew something was up. Something was weird. This wasn't like I have police in the house. It's not the first time I hear them talk about a shooting. Yes, but there's yeah. something different about this one. Yeah, so it kind that's, of that's what I remember. Okay, you have an amazing dexterity with language, and in a brief history, there are multiple voices and a multitude of styles. I, re I really think it's a remarkable book. It's been described as a many-voiced kaleidoscopic history of Jamaica's gang violence and political corruption. Do you agree? And, and how many voices were there actually in the book? I don't remember how many voices were in the book. I think it was like 76. Yeah, Maybe. it's a lot. A lot to do. There may have been 76 characters. I don't know if there are that, that many voices. Maybe around 20-something voices, mm -hmm. which is still a lot. Um, still a I'm trying to think. I, I You know... I wasn't trying to write something comprehensive because then I would have written a history book. Right. Um, I wanted to, the thing is, I really, it really it boiled down to these individual experiences. It's just in Jamaica, the personal is the political, especially in the 70s. Mm -hmm. um, I'm, you know, I, I do talks here all the time. I've been touring all over the states and I've gone to some places where Donald Trump is going to win. And one of the things I talk about with the with, with a lot of these people is partisanship. Says so, you know you don't understand partisanship. I come from Jamaica. We I took partisanship for granted. You have no idea what you have in store for you. Mm -hmm. You know when people start to like beat your kid because he's wearing orange epaulets and it's a JLP neighborhood, mm -hmm. um, and it becomes so cra sort of crazy and surreal. But I wanted that in it that um, I was actually. I wasn't trying to write a big novel, but almost everything that happens in Jamaica is political. Everything is social. Everything has consequences. There's a character in the book, Nina Berger, who says, I hate politics and I hate that I'm supposed to know. And a lot of people are that. It's like, we don't want to talk about politics every day. Right. It's, it's, we're going to veranda this evening. We're going to talk about politics. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's all so encompassing. It's, Right, so it's not like the novel set out to be that, but if you're gonna talk about a shooting or violence and politics and guns and drugs and so on, it's your your, your conversation is gonna get big. Yeah, and I think that's what happened. It's, it's it it is it, it did end up being this sort of summation of of the seventies and how far we've gone because the novel ends in the nineties, mm -hmm. but it's. I, I, I have a feeling if anybody sits down and anywhere in Jamaica and start talking about man that shooting last week, we're going to end up sooner or later talking about politics. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> You're very right. Mm. Bob Marley was, was um, never really named. He was referred to as the singer. Mm -hmm. Why did you treat him in this way? Well, I wanted, you know, the other thing is, one, I wasn't trying to get Bob Marley the person. Um, I don't think that would, that would be a whole different book. Right. Um, I think people have tried to write it with some success and some failure at it. Um, I was actually more interested in the Bob Marley I knew, which I didn't know, who I didn't know at all. 
um, mm -hmm. the Bob Marley through news reports, the Bob Marley through stuff we see on TV or music, someone that playing across the street or lyrics that people remember. So I was interested in Marley the icon. And when I think the singer in Jamaica, if you Google singer in Jamaica, it's Bob Marley that's going to come up first. Mm -hmm. So he becomes almost this, well, not almost, he becomes. Technical difficulties, so we'll be right back.